right guys, uh, we're road cruising for the southern hognose snake. And uh, as you can see, we're in prime habitat, um, sand hill habitat, very uh, spaced out. And um, just very open habitat, lots of ground cover, sandy soils for them to burrow in. And uh, basically, all we gotta do is just cruise roads and maybe we'll find one. Hopefully, that's the whole part of the goal. So far, the chip's been pretty nice. We got a Mole King, Black Racer, Kevin Foley, the man behind the wheel. So, yeah, see what happens. Jeff Bean and Tom Thorpe and Glenn Bartolotti trying to film the same thing I'm filming. What do you think is going to happen? A deer fly. No, that's bigger than a deer fly. Yeah, I don't want to see that. Oh, that's a robber fly. Oh, yeah, it's like right here on you. Oh, a robber fly. Yeah. No, it just flew off. All right, guys. We're out in the uh, a certain region of North Carolina looking for uh, southern hognose snakes, and as you see, we have some radio telemetry equipment. And we're with a whole team of people over here, and uh, so we're gonna see if we can find anything. All right. All right, guys. Well, we found the. Uh, the main goal of the whole trip out here, and that is the uh, southern hognose or heterodon simus. Alright, guys, well, we uh, found the target of the trip, which is the southern hognose or heterodon simus. And uh, these are very unique snakes because they have the, uh, the upturned snout, of course, but also just their behavior is very strange. They don't move very much for uh, a snake, and just they uh, spend so much time underground, we just don't know very much about them. But uh, very uh, distinctive, very stocky for their uh, length. This is an adult male and a very large one at that. You see he's got a very long tail. Um, just very neat snakes. This one actually we radio telemetry, uh, we used the radio, radio telemetry to find it, which uh, I still will count as a lifer because i just been looking for one for so long. But very neat snakes. They have the, the keeled scales and um, the darker blotches on the light background. Very camouflaged. We barely even saw it when it was like right in front of our face the whole time. Um, but uh, yeah, um, they are uh, primarily toad feeders, mainly uh, spadefoot toads, which uh, they'll get down at uh, any breeding sites. But uh, mainly they get them under uh, the ground when they burrow, which uh, Jeff Bean over here believes that they spend most of their time underground digesting the, fre the prey they just burrowed for. So that's why we don't see them that often. But uh, just very uh, beautiful snakes with a very beautiful natural history in the state of North Carolina, and uh, probably my favorite snake in the world. I just like I've never like I never really expected to see one today, and we did. So uh, my life has been forever changed. Oh, and he's starting to do the typical hognose behavior. I don't want to hold him too long because we're trying not to disrupt his uh, daily behaviors, which we probably already have, but it's just one of those opportunities I can't pass up. And uh, just really neat snakes. They had the very alert looking eyes. Um, similar to uh, eastern hognose snakes, but the snout is a lot more curved, and uh, they typically aren't as variable as the eastern hognose snake. And, um, also, uh, the belly is typically a sandy color all the way down the belly, and the tail is about the same color, unlike the eastern hognose, which typically is light on the posterior half, or is it interior? I'm not sure, but then the tail is typically black on the eastern hognose. Um, so uh, there's a little ways you can tell. Um, other than that, they're uh, very cryptic snakes that uh, rarely come out to um, to. Uh, do any uh, foraging. I mean, I'm pretty sure they forage around here quite often. We just don't see them. Um, we were mainly doing road cruising for them, in the on the roads and whatnot, and we didn't see any. So 
this is sort of like the last option. Hopefully we'll see some more today, road cruising. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll uh, put this uh, beautiful specimen back on the ground, wherever we found it. There's my camera, so he's found exactly right here. I'm going to put him in the direction he's facing. He probably won't go there, but... But yeah, they typically do the same uh, hognose behavior. They'll uh, flatten out their head. Not as not as good as a uh, a. Uh... Yeah, I've got but yeah, eastern hognose or uh, west or southern hognose snakes typically uh, are less uh, defensive than an eastern hognose snake, which usually flattens the entire body and coils the tail. But southern hognose snakes do play dead, like most snakes, but. Here he's doing the hissing display. I'm trying not to be too, uh... A stinger in that tail. Yeah. And tell you with it. <laughs> yeah. There's the typical hog nose behavior yeah, I'm familiar with. <laughs> Beautiful pair snakes. Pair there you go. Many years. There you go. Have you ever seen a... a I can't believe I'm looking at one right now. Southern hognose snakes aren't doing very well in North Carolina because of uh, habitat destruction and uh, the red imported fire ants which are uh, eating the hatchlings as they hatch which is what we think or the eggs themselves but uh, just because these snakes barely move throughout the day they're uh, very prone to predators like uh, birds of prey and whatnot so uh, yeah, they're very vulnerable snakes that uh, really need our help and uh, cooperation with uh, uh, other or with the the public because a lot of people don't understand snakes and this is one snake that really needs to be understood in order to help and uh, so a lot of people probably mistake these for rattlesnakes but they're just a snake all their own the snout itself is used to uh, burrow up toads and uh, just very awesome snakes I'm very happy to find one today thanks to uh, Jeff Bean and uh, Tom Thorpe from uh, um, the, uh, they're, well, they're both biologists, but they're both with different organizations, I believe. And see, he's just crawling around. Very beautiful snakes. Very excited to see one today. Hopefully, we'll find some more. Well, guys, uh, our uh, time with this southern hog nose is over with, and we're just going to let him on his way. Let him uh, enjoy the rest of the day. He's going to continue to forage on for uh, any prey, potential females, because they are fall breeders sometimes, and spring breeders. The females can store sperm for a long period of time. And uh, hatchlings are usually hatching this time of year, so... Yep. Very neat species with a very uh, neat history. Unfortunately, they're declining throughout their entire range from North Carolina all the way down to Florida. So, and they're thought to be extirpated from Mississippi and Alabama. So, yeah, we're going to let him finish on the rest of his life. Hopefully, he'll stay out of trouble, not get caught on the road over here. You would never see that if you weren't looking for him. Beautiful.